45 auto versus 9 millimeter. I want to go through some of the history of these cartridges and kind of put them to the test as they stand as full metal jacket ammunition and see how effective they are out in kind of like a ballistics test. But you have to kind of start with the history of these cartridges before you can kind of understand where they stand and why they are developed the way that they're developed. Now the first thing you have to understand is right around the time all these were, were developed, the 9mm, the 45 Auto and a few others, was right around the time where there was the Hague Convention in Europe. Basically what that was right around 1898 was kind of a convention where uh, different countries from Europe looked at uh, what, what they should or shouldn't do in, in war, what's the rules of war, and one of the big things was to outlaw the use of hollow point ammunition to prevent uh, extreme pain and suffering and, and whatnot. So it was kind of made into a rule, it was made into a rule, into a law that you use full metal jacket. Now the United States was not a part of that convention. However, when they developed one of their first automatic pistol cartridges of the 45 Auto, they pretty much said, hey, we'll abide by that. But they kind of went one step further in kind of developing something that was a little bit more effective. And how they did that was simply go with a larger diameter bullet and still keep that, uh, that full metal jacket properties. Now, right around that time, the Army already had a 41 caliber in development for an automatic pistol. And they started doing like stockyard and livestock tests with different cartridges in Chicago. And what they found, and, and, and together with what they found in the Filipino-American War, was that cartridges like the 38, the 38 uh, Long Colt and uh, cartridges like that were not quite as effective as uh, something larger like the 45 Long Colt. And when they did livestock tests, they found that the 9mm wasn't that effective. But the 45 they had just developed was very effective. It was very, very effective, even with a full metal jacket bullet. So that's where we, we, we oftentimes see nowadays people saying that if you're going to use full metal jacket ammunition, the one cartridge that is pretty effective without a hollow point is the 45 Auto. And there's a lot of truth to that, and that's because that's pretty much how it was designed to be. It was de designed to be an extremely well-working uh, man-stopper with a full metal jacket bullet. Now getting to the ori origins of these cartridges with the 45 Auto it is extraordinarily simple and easy. Not so much with the, the 9mm. The 45 Auto was developed basically as the 230 grain bullet moving at 830 feet per second out of a 5 inch barrel. And I have this 5.3 inch a Glock 41 and this will adequately represent uh, the original loading of the 45 Auto. So that will be very easy to figure that out. 9mm on the other hand, uh, not so much. Up and down with the information. It's hard to find a good source of information on this. I've heard that it's a flat nose full metal jacket or it's a, full, uh, a pointed nose full metal jacket. I've heard 115 grain, 124 grain. I've heard 1300 feet per second. I've heard 1000 feet per second. It's kind of like all over the place and uh, the guns that were used is all over the place. Typically nowadays what we see on average is about a four and a half inch barrel. However, the first uh, really popular pistol chamber than the 9mm was the Luger PO8. That was actually a 3.8 inch barrel. So I think this four inch uh, Ruger uh, Security 9 will adequately represent the ballistics of a 9mm. And when we look at barrel lengths in the four to five inch range with 45 auto 9mm, we don't see a huge difference in uh, uh, ballistics that we would see with something like, a, you know, a, a revolver that's three inches to six inches you know you see a big variance there but we don't see it as much in cartridges like this they're kind of designed to, to fire well out of short barrels especially the nine millimeter does very well with a four inch barrel uh, the original uh, nine millimeter was designed by uh, George Luger the original 45 auto by John Moses Browning um, modern pressure ratings of these I'm gonna go by CIP and SAMI specs uh, CIP is the uh, European standard we got about 34,400 with the 9mm um, through CIP. We got 35,000 American standard through SAMI. And then we have 36,500 for the plus P. Not plus P, but you know, NATO. And NATO kind of is a plus P, it's kind of not. 45 Auto, the CIP, we got 19,000 PSI and 21,000 by USA standard SAMI. So much lower pressure cartridges with the 45 Auto. And that's pretty much the history of them. So. And take these things out, we're going to shoot some water jugs, wood, do some accuracy testing, chronograph tests, just kind of see where these cartridges stand. 
and see which one's a better choice when it comes to if you only had full metal jacket ammo or if you just had target ammo, what, what one's going to be a little bit more effective um, for self-defense. So that's some history. Let's go out to the range and see how these cartridges perform. All right, time to test that 45 auto versus 9mm with the full metal jacket ammo. I'm going to hit some water jugs and wood. I'm going to fire a few rounds at the uh, target, see what kind of accuracy I can hold. And we'll shoot a few rounds through the chronograph, see how these particular rounds compare. Just your basic 9mm Winchester white box and your Remington green and white box. We'll see how close they are to advertise velocity out of these particular guns, and we'll see what they'll do to water jugs and wood. So let's get started. All right, here's the Winchester white box, 115 grain. Has a muzzle velocity of 1190 rated on the box. We should see a little bit less than that out of this particular barrel, and I'm about five to six yards from the chronograph. So let's see what we actually get. 1199, 11.62, 11.36, 11.43, 11.44. So pretty respectable performance from that distance and with that uh, particular barrel. So let's see how the 45 compares. All right, the 45 Auto has a muzzle velocity of 835, probably out of a five inch barrel. Let's see if we get that 835. 8.08. 8.22. 8.39. 8.29. 8.27. So I'd say we're pretty much in the right range. Uh, a pretty fair comparison between the two of these because you had probably about the same percentage of velocity loss between the two as what's rated on the box. So let's see what they do to water jugs and wood and we'll see what they'll do on a target as well. I got a piece of 2x4 in the back of these five jugs because I think we're probably going to get a pass through at least with the 9mm. I don't know though. Uh, let's see what happens and let's see if we can hit that piece of 2x4 in the back. All right, it looks like we grazed out the side of the fourth jug. That's all we're getting there. So obviously we're starting to move to the side a little bit. And that's one thing to keep in mind about something like the nine millimeter. It doesn't have a whole lot of momentum as comparison to the 45 Auto. So if it starts to tumble, it's gonna tumble off somewhere else. And we'll see that more with uh, thick, fleshy, watery materials. Um, but we kind of see the opposite sometimes on hard barriers. Let's try the 45 and see how that compares. All right, let's see what happens when we hit it with the 45 automatic. And we got the same thing, only we got one more jug. It, it looks like it's curving a little bit to the left and just barely going around this piece of wood. So we got uh, pretty much full pass through. Both look like they would do equal amount of damage through something like that. Now let's hit the, the, the wood and see how that compares. All right, got the measuring tape out because I want to see a little bit of theory and momentum. Uh, generally, you do get more momentum with a heavier bullet. I'm just going to see how far this is thrown. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is hit down low with each cartridge and see how far it pushes it and measure it. I'll do about two inches up from the bottom. So here's the nine millimeter. I see the bullet. <laughs> All right, I didn't measure it. It was right about there, though. About 22 inches. Um, but I got excited by what I saw here. This is the fourth board here, and there's your bullet. It went through, uh, right through three, and then landed in the fourth, which is pretty good. We'll see how the auto, the 45 automatic compares. 
All right, taped it back up. Let's hit the 45 on the bottom and see if that has any more throw. Okay. No bullet in the fourth board. The third board is cracked. And again, I didn't measure it. We'll just have to go back and do slow-mo. I got too excited. Um, but here's the entrance. 45 9mm. Here's the second board, 9mm, 45. Here's the third board, or the back of the second board, I should say. 45 9mm. And here's the uh, 9mm exit hole. We went through through three and, and embedded in the fourth board with the nine millimeter. The 45 auto were only in the in the third board. Um, but there it is. Pretty cool. So as to be expected, a little bit less penetration on hard barriers. Um, and roughly roughly what I saw is the same on the water. Let's let's hit some targets with this and see how they compare with uh, follow-up shots, accuracy and all that. Well, let's try that. All right, I've got measured out seven yards, and I'm going to fire off ten rounds center mass as, as quickly as I think I can make accurate hits. So let's see how I do with the nine millimeter. All right, they're all on target fairly well. I'll patch it up and try the 45. All right, ten rounds with the 45 auto. Let's see how quick I can do that from seven yards. So they're all there, and my particular group is a little bit tighter with that 45. Um, Speed-wise, I can't say there's much of a difference, um, but you know, if there's any difference here, it's based on the guns themselves. Uh, the 45 has a little bit longer of a of a slide radius, so I think overall comparable to have this uh, shorter nine millimeter with a little bit less recoil, and the 45, even though it had more recoil, the the slide was a little bit longer was able to give me a little bit better of uh, control. So, my tank is over there. Let's see if I can show you with my sights. It's right there. Um, let's go back a significant diff distance and see if I can hit that tank with these particular guns. So let's try that. All right, I'm back 40 yards. Let's gonna fire them off. See if I can hit that tank at that 40 yards. Uh, just kinda, I'll do slow. All right, let me try that again. I think I'm I'm shooting a little bit too low. So I think my point of impact's just a little bit off. I want to see what this will do, what kind of momentum it will do to that tank at that distance. Okay, so I hit it a few times. Let me see what the 45 does. Right, here's the 45 from about 40 yards. We'll see how that does. All right, I would say a little bit more power at that range. All right, to summon up the 45 auto versus the 9 millimeter and full metal jacket ammo. You know, just like anything else in life, there's a little bit of trade-off. I would say overall effectiveness on targets. And, and also, bringing the penetration down uh, less than the, the 9 millimeter, I would say that the 45 actually overall, when it comes to basic self-defense, not hard barrier, I think that the 45 does fare a little bit better. 
I think its uh, ability to shoot longer range is a little bit easier because it, it's just that slower velocity. It seems to cut through the air better with less variance. And we see the kind of the same thing with uh, water jugs. Uh, the momentum wants to keep pulling it through. Hard barriers, not as much with the 45. However, that might be a good thing. So with anything else, like with anything else, we have trade-offs. Uh, you have higher capacity, smaller guns with a 9mm, and with the 45, uh, it is more powerful, and there is more momentum. And there is suggested higher man-stopping power with the 45. So, overall, they're both good cartridges. My opinion is, I think the 45 makes probably the best um, home defense gun. Uh, whether you have full metal jacket or not, I think it's a little bit better. However, the heavy weight of it makes it kind of a burden for a concealed carry for the most part. And the heavy recoil definitely is going to be much worse in a lighter gun. So I would say concealed carry 9mm wins. Home defense, 45 wins. Um, that's just my opinion on the matter. I think they're both good cartridges. Eh. I am a 45 uh, fanboy kind of, but, you know, uh, both are good cartridges. So, anyways, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, comment, share, and like. And... Thank you.